Hi guys and welcome back. Today we've got a brand new review and we've got A Quiet Place Day One. It's a prequel to A Quiet Place One and Two, of course, but it's the no third shit. movie. <laughs> hey, listen up now. Some people may be watching this, right? And they haven't got a clue what's going on, yeah, right? Sorry, sorry. So we've got to be on. inclusive. Yes. So it's the third movie in the franchise, but it is a, it is a prequel. Starring uh, Lapita Nyong, uh, my man Joseph Quinn, and Alex Wolf. Jenks, what are your thoughts on this one? I was just excited for you to try to pronounce the guy from Gladiator. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not doing it. He wasn't in there enough <laughs> no, for me to pronounce. No. I'm not even attempting it. I can't even do it. You know the guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. he's awesome. He's in. Yes, he's in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I it's too hard to say. Uh, I just literally come out of the cinema to watch it. You watched it yesterday, I watched it now, and uh I wanted to like it. It it starts off very, very good. I love the openings to like uh, apocalyptic sort of scenarios where everything's quite calm and you're feeling it in your stomach that the shit's gonna hit the fan. And when it does. I was a little bit underwhelmed. I know you're probably going to disagree with me. I don't know. What do you reckon? <laughs> uh, I massively disagree with you. I've got to be honest. No, I didn't think it was a masterpiece, but I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I thought it had two fantastic performances by the main lead, specifically Joseph Quinn. And what I loved about this film, now, like you said, Jenks, about, I don't know, the end of the world not being big enough. Maybe you're right. Um, it was more. It was more of like, uh, not so much a love story, but a human story masked yeah. in this apocalyptic film. Now it did it did dial into some of the softer sides of Quiet Place a bit more, like yeah. we've seen in the previous films. It did really dial up on those tones. Obviously, you've got uh, Lapita Nyong's character and Joseph Quinn. They meet in the apocalypse. I've got to say, I love their chemistry and Joseph Quinn in this film. This guy is going places. Obviously became famous from Stranger yeah. Things. But his performance in this film, right, made this film fantastic for me. Now, what I loved about it is that they don't speak very much in the film. Obviously, no. it's a quiet place. They've got to stay quiet. But the emotions he portrays in this film throughout, you know everything about him. You know he's vulnerable. You know he's in a big city all alone. He's a long way away from home. Obviously, his family are out in Kent. And what's great about it is being in a big city like New York, if you're from the UK, yeah. I guarantee you is scary anyway. Now he's in New York on his own and there's a fucking alien apocalypse. And he uh, portrays those emotions so well. Uh, for, for me, okay, uh, it was, it was all the beats were good, right? It was well acted. The monsters were good. The problem I had, and it's not a spoiler, it's literally in the first scene, she's dying of cancer, okay? And it's about the fact that all hell's broken loose, and it's is does she still want to survive? Uh, but the, that was the problem for me. Yes, it's a good character study of do you still fight for survival when you when you've got terminal cancer? But it takes away tension for me because I'm thinking, ah, well, what are you gonna lose? It was a bit like um, uh, Gravity. Have you seen Gravity with uh, Sandra yeah, Bullock? Yeah, yeah, you know, she had lost her family and she's in space, and all hell breaks loose, and she's stuck there. And it's about the fact that she doesn't want to live, but now she does because the shit's hit the fan. But with this, but I want people, to, I want, I wanted her to want to get her back to her family. And with this, uh, the main character, she hasn't got anything to get back to. She's dying. And also with him, you know, he didn't have a family to get. Back. I know he had parents, but I never had a sense of any urgency. He was just a boy in a town, in a city, quite vulnerable uh, and I just didn't I wanted to well, I feel stress or oh, please get out of this I didn't really care you know yeah look I get that right but there's been enough movies where we've had that and I thought this was a breath of fresh air it was something a bit different like you said obviously she's dying of cancer and there's not that much to live for but she's got her cat and I will say <laughs> the most iconic the cat. cat since John Z fuck the cat okay I, I was <laughs> right I was going to slag off the cat but I know you would have stepped in and stopped me, okay? Fuck the cat, all right? You're going to slag a cat off. Yeah, well, it's not a dog. No one's going to You're going to stoop that low. Look, it's not a dog. I, I you know, Look, stuck... if she loves her cat, she loves her cat. Can Whether I, it's right. a dog or a cat, who cares, right? Can I just this say... This is what... my thing, right? Right, go this on. This is my thing, is that 
this cat is like a child to her, right? And obviously she meets Joseph Quinn's character and it kind of goes that way where it's like, oh, I can hand my baby off to this guy and he can look after it. Now, we've seen plenty of films where we've got people who've got laws to live for and they've got to get to someone. That's been done a million times. How about we see someone a little bit different and we see a woman and her cat? Why right. is that so wrong? Okay, fine. But for me... <laughs> uh, I just found there's one bit in there, right? And again, I, I'm gonna, it's not a spoiler, it's a little scene that doesn't drive the, the plot forward. Anything like that, there's not, you don't really have to worry about spoilers here. It's, it's a very self contained story where they just getting from, from uh, surviving this monster, going one place to the next, which is fine. I watch a lot of zombie movies, as you can probably tell, that's pretty much the plot of all of them. But there's one scene where they're in a pub and uh, they have a moment where they reenact in something on the stage, like a magic trick. And it's a sweet moment, but it's as if like they're trying to like reminisce about what life used to be like. It's only day one of an apocalypse. These are the actions of something, somebody that's been cut off from normal life for years, like a walking dead moment. Wait but, there now, right? I'll butt in you, Jenks. Go it's on, not to her. It isn't something that happened yesterday. That was the place where her father played piano. It's a hey, special spoil place it. to Spoiler her. alert. His father oh. plays piano. Oh, that's fucking rude. Well, I'm be. saying, right, if you're going to start bringing up plot points, right, <laughs> I will chime in and I'll say that space, that place specifically is special to her because obviously her father played piano there and it was an important place in her childhood and she's just having this magical moment again in this place and it really shows how much they start to connect, obviously, and you can see how much of a kind soul this guy is. Yeah, I'm right. standing thinking a bit heartless, Jenks. Right. Well, it was a beautiful scene. It was beautiful. It, this, this would have been good, right? Let's say the, the A Quiet Place was a TV show and every episode was a little chunk of somebody dealing with this. This would have been a really good hour episode where you can uh, deal with slightly different moments, but... I just didn't care about anybody. And, I, and it sounds like I, th I think the film is shit. I don't. But, like, there was it's one bit, okay? <laughs> They're so laughable. Um, okay, it's not a spoiler. There's, there's people on a boat, right? And for some reason, the boat driver, <laughs> captain, presses the horn. Uh, and again, what? Well, you don't have to press the horn. He's supposed to shut the fuck up. He did it twice. And it's like, as if, us oh, a boat. We better have a horn going off. It's like, no, no, no. It's a quiet place. Don't press the horn. You don't have to because the boat. Do you remember that bit? No, you don't. Yes, I remember that bit. Of yeah. course I do. I watched it yesterday. Look, you're making me sound like I'm <laughs> oh, slagging the film off, okay? <laughs> I'm not. You haven't it's, said it's... one good thing about it, All right. since you started. I'll, I'll say one thing. The cinema I went to was very good because everyone shut the fuck up. It was dead silent. I was very lucky. I looked around to see if there's any dicks there. Uh, there was one woman on a phone. And if oh, I had no way... Oh, where are you in the cinema you went to now? No, but... I, Tell I, us I what you think about the film. I, I just want to say one anecdote, right? When it was dead silent, I had uh, peanut M&Ms. And I know how she felt in the film, or John Kradinsky in the first one. I was eating my pe peanut M&Ms, I guess. And, and it made such a noise and my wife looked at me and I was like <laughs> and I had to wait then for like thunderstorm to bite <laughs> so yeah. I know I live I lived that I lived that movie so that, <laughs> you were there yeah I lived that you know <laughs> yeah so what right. do you think then should we do our stars no 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 stars right you still haven't told me anything good about the film you just was, I did I, I you said at the start cinema Okay, I said at the start, it was a well-made film, well-acted, uh, cinematography was excellent, all those beats were excellent, the monsters were excellent. I just didn't care about the two main characters. I didn't care if they'd lived or died. Uh, I didn't I didn't have any fear when the monsters came. I when I in the first one, I really cared about that family because it's a family and the stakes are high. Some guy from Kent who misses his mommy and daddy. He's about 45, the bloke is. <laughs> that, okay, I'm slagging off again. It, those things were good, okay? What? You're, <laughs> you're impossible, man. You're an impossible man to please. Look, 
I, I'm saying as it is. I'm gonna. Are you ready for your star rating? Yes, let's do it. Okay. Get this, get this review out the way. I give it a solid three stars. A solid, solid three, three stars. stars. Yes. An absolute solid four stars for me. I loved it. I haven't even had a chance to say what I like about this film because you've Go spent then. the whole 10 minutes just slagging it off. Go on, I, I will like. say, right, solid four stars. I absolutely loved it. Like you said, fantastic performances. The cinematography was great. The action was fantastic. And those blister, those blisteringly, is that a word? Blisteringly? Blisteringly, yes, I think so. It is now, who cares? Yeah. I have, I've lost my trail of thought now. Look, it's a four-star movie. I really enjoyed this one. The performances were great. I think it stands up really well to the first two. I didn't really miss John Krasinski's direction. I thought it fit in the universe well. I think the guy who came on to direct this one, Michael Sarnowski, pronounce his name, um, I, I think he understood the universe well and yes, what the first two meant. Did. Obviously, it had to be heartfelt. It had to be meaningful. And I thought they dialed it up in this one great. And like I said, I just love the performances in this movie. I think it's a great showreel for the actors. Now, any studio looking to hire these guys, I feel like this is the only film they need to show the studio to show what they're capable of. And basically, everything you said you didn't like about the film you had a problem with, I absolutely loved it. My girlfriend cried her eyes out the whole film. And it just touched me. I thought it was a great film. I almost gave it five stars. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. And it's a film you have to see in cinema because, like the first two, it really relies on the sound mixing to really yeah. get you into this one. And this one just does a great job of that. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed that review, I don't slag all, off, all our films off. Uh, if you enjoy horror reviews, uh, please subscribe. Uh, yeah, come on, I don't always slag them off. <laughs> Here we yeah. are, then, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.